What's up, I'm Sakisha LaFay, and this is my first booktube review. Please don't judge me. Up until maybe like a month ago, I didn't even know that there was a such thing as a booktube. I knew about book talk, but I didn't know about booktube. And it makes sense because that's where book talk got their name from. But woo child. As I stated in my booktube introduction, one of these books was the book that started my 12 year hiatus from reading books. But this book, this book was the book that had me, this is the book that took me two years to read. I want to preface this by saying that this is my opinion. I'm really not trying to bash anybody. I hope don't nobody send me a sis and deceased because I can be harsh. I can't even lie. Like, I'm really... I'm harsh on myself and I'm harsh on those around me. I've dialed it back a lot since I've gone through my spiritual awakening, but you know, sometimes it's easy to go back to old habits. So not knowing what booktube was, I kept typing in booktube and black people just would not pop up for the love of God. I kept typing in booktube, booktube, booktube. I said, you know what, ain't no way in hell I gotta type in black booktube like Google. And if you know, you know. So I type in black booktube and all of my people pop up. I said, okay, I am in the right, I'm in the right corner of YouTube now. I'm good, I'm straight. I watched two black booktube Ubers. What? I watched two black booktube so, oh my God, <laughs> what? <laughs> I watched two black women that's a part of the black booktube community. <laughs> and I didn't even finish watching their videos. I just wanted to get like a glimpse of what was going on. And I decided that I'm going to create my own little, I guess you can say grading system. And here's how it's gonna go. I don't know if anybody else is doing this, but I'm going to be grading books off of like a three point scale. I'm grading authors off of the use of language, the way that they describe things. I love when an author puts me exactly where the main character is. I'm in the book. I'm, I'm like a fly on the wall. Like put me in the eyes of the character basically. Next is the storyline. And what I mean by the storyline, like is the storyline weak? Is it strong? Is this something that, okay, so books, movies, TV shows, they all go hand in hand. I don't like to watch nothing twice unless it's really, really good. So if I, if I wanna read your book twice, your book is really, really, really good. And I don't mind going through that process of my time again. I wanted to add that I love magical stuff as well. I just wanted to throw that out there that I love. Y'all gonna hear me say a lot that I love magical stuff, whether it's a TV show, movie, or book. I love magical things. That is all. So your storyline has to be on point. Next is the overall author's imagination. And what I mean by that, it kind of ties in with the storyline and the use of language, but it's like a it's like, okay, does this make sense? Does this go with that? Does everything tie in good? Bada boom, bada bam, you know? I'm editing and I feel like I'm not explaining this correctly. So you know how a movie could be good, but like certain parts of the movie was just trash or the delivery was whack. That's how I feel I'm um, grading books. Like a storyline could be great, but like the overall of it, it's just trash. Like that that's what I'm trying to say, basically. I hope I'm still, I, I hope I'm making sense. Cause I, I kind of sort of feel like I'm not making sense to myself. <laughs> and all of that will be graded on a scale of one through 10, 10 being the best, one being the wackiest. I'm going to add all of those up and then that's when I get the overall score of the books. I'm going to add all of those points up, divide them by three, and that's when I get the overall point of the book. So I want to preface this and say that when I saw this book, I think I picked this up at Books A Million. Or did I get it from Amazon? I don't know. It was one of them. 
And you can tell I had this book for a while. I just been lugging it everywhere. Look, look at this. You can tell like that little part is real. I don't know if you can, yeah. Yeah. So I've had this book for a while. But anyway, let me tell y'all why I picked up this book. So I read the first sentence. I seen Mississippi and I seen a black woman. And I said, I'm finna pick this book up because I'm from Mississippi and I'm a black woman. And she from Mississippi and she a black woman. So yeah, yeah. I'm, we as people, we need to start, we need to start reading more because um I probably wouldn't have picked this book up, to be honest. For starters, I'm 29. I don't want to read about teenagers having sex or teenage pregnancies. This book came out in 2011. If I would have read this book in 2011, this book would have been bomb because in 2011, I was still in high school. I think I was a junior or a senior, one of those. If I would have read this book in high school, this book would have been gold. But me reading it in big 2022, it doesn't give. It, it's, it's not giving, you know. The use of language, like the way that she, the way that Jasmine Ward describes everything in this book, I feel like I can drive to wherever this is at in Mississippi and I know exactly where to go. Like I, I already feel like I'm from there. I know what a corner store is. I know where the neighbor is at. I love how she describes every little thing. I'm talking about the way the branch crack, the way the wind whistles. If I wanted Jasmine Ward to describe my life, I would call her. <laughs> I would hit her up like, girl, please do. The way she describes things, 10 out of 10. Chef Kiss, I can't take that away from her. I get a storyline of two out of 10 because I don't want to hear about a teenager having sex with her brother's best friends. And then she get pregnant and they just super poor. I didn't want to read about that. Like, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm over black trauma. I am over it. Can we do something new? And I understand the sales. But I'm, I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into that later in this video. The author imagination, overall, two out of ten. Cause I feel like this is great for 2011. Because back then in 2011, you could come out with something super basic and it'll blow up. But after. I'm comparing everything to what happened to Monday. If you haven't watched what happened to Monday on Netflix, I don't know if it's still on Netflix because I don't even deal with Netflix anymore in big 2022. If you can't, if you, if you ain't got a storyline like what happened to Monday, garbage, <laughs> garbage. Okay, straight up garbage. Like I said, 2011, this book on point, but 2022 no trash um no i did like when she was flipping back and forth in the book for example when ski the dog which the see the dog name is china when she killed one of her puppies at the same time while their dad was being ran over by a tractor by the oldest son i love how she was like flipping back and forth like each line was it was going back and forth. Like one line was China got mad at her puppy and grabbed it by the neck. And the dad was yelling at the son, like, come on, come up a little. Cause they was trying to knock down a chicken coop in order to use those boards to board up the window in order to get ready for the storm. And I, I love that back and forth. I felt like I was watching a movie. Like every time I would stop reading the book, it felt like like I was watching a movie every single time. Every time I stop and come back, I'm like, oh, okay. Every time I would stop reading the book, I grab my phone or my iPad thinking I'm watching a movie, but I'm reading a book. So <laughs> that was fun. So 10 plus two is 12 plus another two is 14. Divide that by three and that is 4.6. But I'm gonna have to give this book a three out of 10 because I'm tired of talking about this. 
it's it's getting really tiring but a light-skinned black woman writing an experience about a dark-skinned black woman just doesn't sit well with me because society treats light-skinned black women and dark-skinned black women totally different and having all those stereotypes attached to the character it was too much and i get it black trauma sells and black trauma sells even more when the characters are dark skinned. So yeah, um, Javelin Ward, Savage the Bones, gets a three out of 10 for me. I'm kind of scared to read her other work. I bought her other book, but I'm scared to read it now. To me, that's equivalent to white people writing about the experiences of black people and making bank on it. Just, and I get it. I promise I get it. And I get it, art is subjective. People write what they want to write. People feel what they want to feel, but we need to be more mindful of things because it just, it looks crazy. Crazy as hell. Like I said, I got Jasmine Ward's other book called Where the Lines Bleeds and Where the Line Bleeds. And Lord, I just hope this ain't about a dark skinned black woman in trauma because 10 times out of 10, when an author makes a lot of money with one type of way of writing, they're going to continue to keep writing like that. So, um, so yeah, Jasmine Ward, Savage the Bones gets three out of 10 for me. If y'all read this book, let me know what y'all think in the comments. And thanks for watching.